So we have two potential energy diagrams here today so that I can show you the effect of catalyst and activation energy. Now we have one of them, which is endothermic, and the other one is going to be exothermic. And here's why. The reactants have lower potential energy than the uh, products in this one. And over here, the reactants have higher potential energy than the reactants. So delta H is going to be positive in this one. And over here, delta H will be negative. And delta H is basically the change in the potential energy of the reactants and products. So it kind of makes sense because when you're endothermic, you're gaining energy, which means that you're putting energy into the products. And over here, when you have an exothermic reaction, you're releasing energy. So the products are going to have less potential energy than the reactants. Now onto activation energy. That's going to be the difference in the potential energy of the reactants and the highest point on the graph. So over here, it's going to look kind of like this. And we denote activation energy using E sub A. So that's just going to be the activation energy for both. So if we introduce a catalyst into the reaction, the graph is going to change into something like this so that you can see that the activation energy is less than what it first was. So using a catalyst decreases the amount of activation energy needed to complete the reaction. So basically using a catalyst is going to make the reaction occur faster and easier. Now what you need to remember is that catalysts are never used in the reaction. So if you put a catalyst into a reaction, it's just going to stay there and speed up the reaction and just do nothing else. It's not going to be used in the reaction, nor is it going to disintegrate or something like that. So that's basically all you need to know. Catalysts provide an alternate pathway for the reaction to occur, decreasing the amount of activation energy needed for the reaction and um, does not get consumed in the reaction at all.